Good evening or good morning. Hello, wherever you wherever you are. Uh, welcome to Monday's Zen and Zazen class. Uh, today I want to talk about the Fukan Zazengi Dogen's Zen manual. But before that, uh, let's sit together for 30 minutes. <laughs> 
Thank you for joining. Uh, two weeks ago, I started talking about the Fukan Zazengi, Dogen's manual for Zazen. And today I want to continue. I will share the screen. Um, but how do I do that? Like this, maybe. Probably now you see uh, on the left side the English text, on the right side the Chinese original. And last time I did the first four sentences here. These four sentences um, correspond to the first English paragraph. That's from the Antaiji homepage. You can find this English translation uh, on the Antaiji homepage. In short, uh, Dogen Zenji says the way, and the Chinese word for way is, is Dao, the truth. Uh, the truth is already where you are. You don't have to look it, look for it. Uh, in some far away place. Right now, where you stand, that's where the truth is. There's no use in uh, looking for it here or there. Uh, there's no place where dust could settle, so it's no use to sweep. Um, what does he say? The Dharma wheel is rolling freely. Why should we exhaust our effort? It reminded me uh, of, a fa of a famous poem by the American poet E. E. Cummings. Um, he says, that's a 20th century poem. Seeker of truth, follow no path. All, path, all paths lead where truth is here. So I think that expresses uh, quite nicely what Dogen Zenji says here in this first uh, paragraph. And uh, from here, I think the um, text takes a little spin. So this is um, the second sentence. Um, ah, no, not that one. That's the fourth. And the one that comes after that is this one. Uh, in Japanese, uh, you would read that Shikali to iedo mo goli mo sa aleba tenchi halukani hedatali Ijun wazukani okoleba funzen toshite shin o shisu. And the meaning is if there's only the slightest gap, only a minimal separation. That will separate heaven from earth. If you make just the slightest distinction. So what kind of this distinction between good and bad, between illusion and enlightenment, between life and death, me and the world. Um, maybe until we are maybe three years old or so, we don't make this distinction. We don't even know what today and yesterday and tomorrow means. We're always living in the now. Everything is connected. But then when we become three years old or so, we learn to say I and we learn we are only one part of the world. And a little later we learn that tomorrow is going to be another day. We learn these distinctions and that's kind of what separates heaven and earth. Well, I think I talked about that uh, already, uh, but the famous uh, story of Adam and Eve, they bite into the apple. And uh, the apple supposedly grows from this tree that makes us able, gives us the wisdom to distinguish right from wrong, to make differences. But the moment the two bite into the apple, they first they realize they're naked and then when God sees them with thick leaves covering their genitals 
uh, he says, okay, you ate that apple, now you have to leave um, the garden Eden. But you could, well, you could say, you could uh, make the argument that it's not that uh, they ate the apple and then as a punishment God drove them out of the garden Eden. Actually, Adam and Eve, that's, that's ourselves. We are still in Garden Eden. It's just that we make distinctions. We always think, but there must be, there must be a better place somewhere else. It's this distinction um, that lets us forget that actually this Garden Eden or Nirvana, whatever we're looking for, it's where we are right now here. But the slight gap, Golimosa uh, Aleba, this slight gap, this s small distinction separates heaven from earth. Or heaven and hell, you could also say. We always feel like our life is hell and we're hoping that one day we get to heaven. Ijun Wazukani Okoleba Funzen Toshte Shin O Shisu. I and Jun. Uh, means the one means to go against something and the other means to follow something so whenever we run away from something and run after something else we try to avoid something and we try to chase and get something else that's when we lose our mind how is the English translation here? If you follow one thing while re you resist the other, your mind will be scattered and lost. Okay, maybe I'll stop here and uh, Schwanzan can translate uh, for a while and then I continue. <laughs> Uh uh 后面对老师讲今天讲了后面的几句毫厘之差吃苹果的那个故事尾顺才起um, actually, this line that I just wrote, read, is a quote from another old Chinese text. Uh, Japanese reading is Shinjin Mei. I think in Chinese you pronounce it something like Xin Xin Ming. And 
here you got the English, uh, you got the Chinese, there's a German translation and there's several English versions. Oh, um, let's use this one here. That's actually from Australia, but I think the uh, translation itself is uh, by Kazuaki Tanahashi and Joan Halifax. Uh, an American English uh, Zen teacher. Anyway, um, the beginning of this text, Shido Bunan Yui Ken Ken Jaku, you read it in uh, Japanese. That's very similar to what Dogen Zenji says in the beginning. It means um, the great way is not difficult here in the translation. For those free of preferences, um, actually, this translation is a little free, a little free, um, because what is difficult here is the sixth character. Uh, if you would translate it literally, Shido means, well, the highest way, and Bunan means it's not difficult. But then this means you just, you just have to and these two characters means well to choose between one and the other to make distinctions and to choose one over the other but the character before that means to dislike something or to stay away from maybe so a more literal translation would be uh, the highest way Tao, the truth is not difficult at all you just have to stop choosing, disliking one or the other. And uh, it continues, um, as long as there is no liking and disliking, um, it will be clear just the way it is. Everything will be clear and bright in front of your eyes. And then this third sentence, um, Dogen Zenji is quoting this literally in the Fukanza Zengi. Uh, here again, if there's only a slightest gap, heaven and earth will separate. And then the fourth line, um, if you want to see it right in front of your eyes, if you want to see the truth, right in front of your eyes. You have to stop going against or chasing after. So basically what Dogen Zenji said in the Fukanza Zengi. Um, going against it or chasing after that, there's always this constant conflict. And that's what causes the disease, the sickness of the mind, of the heart, um, the disease of the mind. And so it goes on and on and on. And um, the Shinjin Mei is also a very famous text in Zen. But whenever I read it, I ask myself, how come that the author On the one hand, is teaching non-dualism. You just have to stop making distinctions. You're already, you're already inside the truth. You only have to stop making distinctions. But then for the whole text, he permanently, permanently makes distinctions. He permanently makes this argument. If you stop making distinctions, Things as they are will be the truth. But because you make distinctions, your mind is shattered and lost. You don't see things the way they are. If you let go of this making distinctions, it will be fine. But because you can't do that, and it goes on and on and on. And I ask myself, how come, how come that the author doesn't realize that means he, he is actually making distinction here. So I find this text in a way quite amusing 
that it tries to teach us non-dualism, but it's using actually dualism as a means. And it never explains um, why, why the text doesn't get around. But um, now I want to get back once more to Dogen's text, um, where he's using a quote. But I think I think what's Do Dogen, what Dogen is doing here, is going in a different direction. Um, I think Dogen Zenji. Um, from a young age, he had this question, if we were already inside enlightenment, if we are already Buddhas, and that's what the Buddhists at Dogen's time taught, we are already Buddhas, we already have Buddha nature, there's no use to practice. And Dogen's question was, well, then why? Why do we meditate? Why do we shave our heads? And nobody could answer that question in Japan, that's why he went to China. And in China, finally, finally, he got the answer. And basically, the answer that he got, and that's what he's also expressing here in the Fukan Zazengi, is that practice in itself is an expression of enlightenment. Enlightenment, enlightenment manifests here and now as our practice. And Dogen was very critical of people who would use the understanding that we're already here. Right now, in this moment, that's where enlightenment is. There's no use to practice, for example. What do you want to practice? You're already there. You're already a Buddha. What do you want to wipe? There's no dust in the first place. Uh, Dogen Zenji was very critical because he had the feeling that these people would only use this understanding as an excuse to not practice. So when Dogen Zenji here is quoting the Shinji Me, I think he's doing it with a different intention. He doesn't say um, that uh, just stop choosing, you will already be there. Um, but what he says don't use your understanding that you already have the truth as a way to say, oh, then I don't have to practice. Because then, then heaven and earth separate. That's where heaven and earth separate. I only want my Satori, but I don't want to sit. If you think like that, your enlightened mind is shattered and lost. Um, okay, um, we are still at the beginning of this text and two weeks I will continue, but please Schwanza and maybe you can translate what I said before you can ask questions. Uh, can I see the point, the other Xin Ming, the other? Ah, the uh, Xin Qin, okay. Um, where is it? Here, okay. 然后刚才老师讲到了那个就是道元禅师他刚才这么写的那个出处其实刚才道元禅师他里面有一句那个毫厘之差毫厘之差是吧刚才他那个就是他的这个作禅仪里面浮赞作禅里面讲到的这个
呃，就好像天和地之间的差别一样，是丝毫就是只有那个毫厘之差。呃，然后道元，然后后面解的是，你如果能够嗯、呃、意识到现在，呃，不管是你呃就是对抗，还是你顺着在追求什么的时候呢，不管是。你你在对抗什么事情，或者是你顺着他在在追求什么事情，其实就会成为你的心病。就好像之前老师反复强调、反复提到那个游戏里面，会把自己陷入到那个游戏当中。啊，老师在读这个这段儿的时候呢，呃，就是想，其实道元禅师他他那本就是他我们现在讲的那个《普赞座禅仪》，那他也是借鉴了这个。然后，嗯。就好像我们，你知道了，呃，你知道了，不要追逐，不要有分别之心，就能够理解到，呃，至高无上的真理。那道远，那老师刚才他读到这首诗的时候呢，他就觉得，你看，呃，这个作者他怎么能够不明白呢？他一方面就是后面这首诗很长，老师刚才没有说完哈。老师说，其实后面也是不断重复，就是一方面他告诉大家，你要停止选择，因为你已在真理当中了，要要停止你有这些分别选择的选择之心。同样，另外一方面，他又一直在选择，一直在区分，就是一直这样告诉你不要选择。<笑>就是这这后面这些后面这首诗啊，一直是这样反复重复，一直是这样。那怎么作者他会没有意识到，他一直就是一边说不要有选择，不要有区分分别之心，而一边他又在做这种比较呢？呃，然后呃，老师说，其实道元禅师他借鉴这句话，那道元禅师他有没有读到读者这些矛盾的地方呢？嗯，道元禅师他特别年轻的时候呢。其实就是为了寻找答案，就是因为他认为，就是我们都是有佛性的，人都是有佛性的嘛。那为什么我们还要修行，还要坐禅呢？和尚为什么还要剃头呢？就是你已经是已经有佛性了，为什么还要还要练习和修炼呢？他带着这个疑问来到了中国找答案。呃，回来之后，他从中国修行回来之后，写到了刚才就是我们今天读的这个。普赞坐禅仪，他是他是从中国回来以后写的，那个时候，道元禅师还是很年轻的啊。然后，呃，他回来之后就明白了，其实就是我们所说的佛里面的觉悟，或者是呃我们所说的禅定，中文里面翻译成禅定或者是觉悟哈、啊，不管你管它叫什么，他他突然就明白，其实只要你练习，你就是觉悟的；只要你练习，你就是有禅定的，因为因为你的练习。呃，因为你的觉悟和禅定是在练习当中的，嗯，有一些人呢就会有这种想法哈。那我们已经有了你想要追求的禅定，那为什么还要练呢？嗯、呃，然后其实道元禅师也是让告大家，也是就是在告诉大家，你要停止选择，呃，你不需要理解，你不要以你不要以。不要以你的理解为借口而不练习，因为练习是在，因为真理是在练习当中的。当你有这个追求，或者是呃，不，就是刚老师说那个违顺、违顺之心啊，不管你是违背他还是顺着他，有了这些追求、这些心的时候呢，其实你就已经离真理很远了，就好像那个天。天地之分，天和地之间有丝毫有丝毫的区别，所以我们要通过练习和呃，通过练习，因为觉悟是在练习当中，呃，真理也是在练习当中。其实，台湾禅师，台湾禅师是想传达的是这个意思，大概是这个意思啊。Thank you.、Um... Probably it will take us some time to read the whole text, but、uh, why not? Why not? I think we have time.、Um, and if you have questions today, anything you would like to share,、uh, please do so. Any questions? Anything that you would like to share? Uh, Chris is raising his hand. Please. Okay. Thank you very much. Yeah, about what you were talking about, the answer to Dogen's、uh, question of why to practice 
And then there is in the Genjo Koan, it ends with the story of the monk of the master waving the fan. Yes. Know? Yes. So, <clears throat> I kind of get the idea, but in the English translation, there's one part that I just don't get. Mm -hmm. And uh, so um, <clears throat> the monks, or no, the masters waving the fan, the monks asks, uh, the nature of wind is ever present and permeates everywhere. Mm -hmm. Why are you waving a fan? The master says, you know, you know only that the wind's nature is ever present. You don't know that it permeates everywhere. Mm -hmm. And then the monk says, how does wind permeate everywhere? So that part, what is he asking there? Because he starts off saying the wind's ever present and permeates everywhere. Mm -hmm. And then he asks the second time, how does it, is he saying, well, does it or does it not permeate everywhere? Or is he saying, um, like, uh, do you know what I mean? I don't know what, 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 what is he saying? How does wind permeate everywhere? Mm -hmm. Well, I, I think the, the question or, or the, the, the monk understood that Buddha nature is everywhere. We all have Buddha nature. You could even say we're already Buddhas. So basically Dogen's question when he was young, why, why do we practice? And the master says, okay, you understand that Buddha nature is everywhere. But you don't understand how you actualize it. How do you actualize this Buddha nature that permeates everywhere, right here, right now? And well, then the, the monk asks him, asked, uh, asks him again, so, so, okay, okay, so how do you do it? And uh, the answer of the master is this. Um, I think that the point in that koan is, is the difference between this, this abstract understanding that, well, everything as it is, is already enlightenment. Okay, okay, but how does that manifest when you wash the dishes in the kitchen? How does that manifest when you take a shower? How does that manifest when you interact with your colleagues at work? It's, it's one thing to say everything is enlightenment, but then how, how does it manifest right now in this moment? I, I see. So maybe it could also, I understand what you're saying. Maybe the monk could be saying like, well, how, how is it that you're making the wind permeate everywhere? When he's watching the, the master wave the van, would that also translate right? When he says, how does it permeate everywhere? He sees him saying, Earl, how are you making it permeate everywhere then? And then the master just keeps waving it. Or would that, would that make sense? Maybe. I'm, 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 I don't quite understand. <laughs> I understand your meaning. Hmm. But it's but the monk starts off already saying the hmm. nature of the wind is ever present. Yes, yes. Then so he's saying that, that that's what Buddha nature is everywhere. But then yeah, the point is, but how does it manifest here and now in this moment? Oh, so he's saying, okay, okay. Okay, I see. So he's saying, well, how how does it manifest then would be the translation. So it start so then it would be like he's starting out, he's saying Buddha nature is everywhere. <clears throat> the monk, the master says, uh, well, how do you know that? And then the monk says, well, how is it manifesting? And then the master just waves the fan. Mm -hmm. well, 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 the monk asks, uh, if Buddha nature is all permanent, why do you use that fan? Or if it's, it, it's everywhere? Why do you use the fan? And the master says, well, you understand. Obviously, you understand that everything everywhere is Buddha nature. But you haven't understood that it's manifesting right now in front of your eyes. And probably the monk doesn't even know what, what he's talking about, this actualization. For him, Buddha nature is a concept in, in his mind. 
So, so the monk basically is asking, what are you talking about? What do you mean with permeation? Or what I say is actualization. What do you, do you mean with actualization of Buddha nature? And of course, the master could then have trans, uh, explained, as I'm explaining right now, the master could have tried explaining something like I'm explaining right now, but uh, that is just another explanation. So what the master did is demonstrate it. Um, if the master stood in the kitchen, he could have demonstrated by just washing the dishes. Uh, that would have also been a demonstration. Um, and basically that's the point that Fuka uh, Dogen Zenji will do in the next couple of sentences. The next couple of sentences Dogen Zenji is basically saying, suppose you have perfectly understood the truth, you have a perfect understanding and you have even enlightenment experience. But even then, even then, if you don't manifest it, it's just like if you had your head stuck in that enlightenment, but your body, your body cannot get out. Don't you see that Shakyamuni was sitting six years, Bodhidharma was sitting nine years, and you try to chase this enlightenment with your thoughts, and you say, because it's everywhere, I don't have to sit. Why do I have to practice? Basically, that's the point that Dogen Zenji will do in the next couple of sentences. Don't excuse yourself with that understanding that the air is everywhere. But where, where's the wind right now? Where's the wind? Don't you feel the wind? You have to feel the wind. Thank you. Thank much. you. I got it. Diane is writing a chat. Is there a recommended amount of time that one should practice? Um, the short answer is no. The short answer is no. Like if people ask me, what is the minimum of time that you have to sit? I usually say five minutes. Of course, one minute can also be a long time. For example, uh, sometimes in school, uh, the teacher asks the students to sit quiet for one minute and for somebody who's never practiced even that one minute can be extremely long but uh, here in the monday class we usually sit for 30 minutes but 15 minutes 10 minutes five minutes is okay what is more important than sitting for a long stretch of time is to continue with practice so um of course, if you participate in this Monday class, it's a good thing, but it would be actually best if you also on your own sit for even if it's only five minutes or one minute per day. And if at one point uh, you think, well, five minutes is nice, but it's not enough. I want to sit longer then you can sit 10 minutes, 15 minutes, 20 minutes. And sometimes people say, if I don't sit for 20 minutes, it's not really Zazen. So some people might feel like that. I personally, I feel that a short Zazen can be sometimes even better because if you know I've got only five minutes, then you will be actually on the cushion. While if you tell yourself I need to, I need to sit one hour every day, then sometimes the first 10, 15, 20 minutes, you don't really get into the mood because you know oh i have one hour anyway i've got one hour anyway so so i don't really have to be present on the cushion right from the start so sometimes even a shorter time can be in a way better than a too long time but it depends on you you have to find out what works for you also the same question is it better to sit in the morning better to sit in the evening um ideally best is if you sit both in the morning and the evening uh, but if one works better for you than the other, uh, choose whatever works for you. And ideally sit regularly, regularly. And if you can, same time of the day helps to continue with the practice rather than tell yourself, oh, I'm going to sit whenever I feel like it, because then it's very easy to find an excuse.
Anything else that you would like to ask or share? If not, we are already a little over time. Um, thank you. Thank you for having patience with me. Uh, I don't get ahead very fast. Next uh, week, I would like to talk about Sawaki's quotes again, but then in two weeks, we get back to this text from Kanza Zengi. Thank you for joining. Have a nice week. Enjoy the spring and see you again next week if you like. Stop